think it's on the right channel. Okay, finish up. All right, so what do you guys think? Um, I, I just put up the, the list from the forklift. So the initial state. For airplane travel. What's that? Current airport, yeah. Airport. Current airport. All right, set of actions. Right, so all the airlines, all of the connecting flights between that airport and another airport. So, set of actions. And one of the most successful AI companies, oh, I forgot their name now, but they were a company that basically did, did this. Like they, they were able to very efficiently collect and search this data of connecting flights from lots of different uh, airports. They're up in, you know the name? What, ITA, yeah. So they, they um, were bought by Google pretty recently. Um, and they made a business by selling this, this kind of uh, connection. Um, yeah? Um, my apologies if this is too involved a question. No. Would it be feasible to have kind of a two-dimensional state space? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, you, so, so you could do that. Why would you do that? Why would you want to do that? I don't want to do this. Um, to, track, to, track where, to track how many, how many passengers go on each flight. Yeah. It would, better, it would better keep track of revenue. Right. So, like, if you, so, so from this, so, so from this version of the problem, we were, like, pretending we were ourselves, like, trying to book our flights. But if you wanted to be an airline, um, that's exactly the problem they're trying to figure out. Like, like not only how can they sell and how can they price these flights, but like what flights do they even have in order to kind of maximize their profit. In order to do that, part of their search space is going to have to be how many people are on these flights and how much are they paying because, of course, they're all trying to gouge us, right? Like they all pay, make us pay different prices for, for our, uh, our... Like if everybody on the flight, on a particular flight, is not paying the same price for their ticket and they're trying to price it, so that every plane is full, but they're also maximizing their revenue. Um, so, 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 so yes, I, and that's exactly how we start to think about that. Lee. Yeah. Yeah. So when we get to path cost, that that um, you can see, it's not necessarily. There's different things you could consider, right? One is price. Um, something else is how long it takes to get there. Something else might be, well, like I just like the Chicago airport, and I really hate the Colorado airport. So even though it might be cheaper and faster, I want to go to Chicago and not um, to, the, to the other one. There, there might be many different functions for different people, for different use cases for that, for that path cost. Um, all right, transition model. What's the transition model? Yeah, so, so if I take a flight to Chicago, I'm going to be in Chicago, right? So moving to the next airport. Is this right? Will you, will you always get to that airport when you get on an airplane? Hopefully, but, it, but, but it's not, right? Like, like sometimes you get on an airplane, it gets diverted, or something happens and you end up back where you started. Um, in real life, it's non-deterministic. Right, you get on that flight, and probably you're going to end up at the next airport. But maybe you won't. Maybe you'll get diverted. Maybe there's like a small probability that you go to any other airport within, you know, a thousand miles of where you are. And like the real distribution is probably more complicated even than, than that. Um, now here's an example of observable but non-deterministic. You know where you are. At least the pilot's going to tell you anyway. Um, once the action's done, you know where you are. Um, but you, didn't, you don't necessarily know when you take the action to get on that airplane where you're going to end up. 
Um, but we're going to assume it's, it's uh, deterministic. All right, goal test. It's a little, yeah. Arrived at my, right, I'm at the city I want to be. So some of these maybe seem almost obvious, right? Like, like I'm, well, of course, I'm at the goal when, I, when, I, when I'm at the goal. Um, the thing to realize when you're formulating this, you have this, th th these words, each of these um, words translates into code, a program that you have to write. So you have to write a, a little check that, that says, I'm at the city that I want to be at. You have to write a, a function that says, if I, if I go from here to here, my new state is, is in this new city. Um, you have to write a function that says, if I'm in this state, if I'm in this city, these are all the flights that, I, that, that, that go out of that city. And that might, like in real life, that might actually be kind of hard to write. I might have to go and mine Google or, or ask ITA. You pay them big bucks and they'll give you a subscription so you can look up all the flights real fast um, to, to, to find this information, right? And you know, websites do. I mean, there's, a, there's a whole plethora of these travel sites that, that get this stuff so that you can search through and, and, and run this search. Um, all right, and then path cost. So, so Lee already talked about it a little bit. What's your path cost? It could be the total number of miles traveled. However, uh -huh. it's more complex than that. If you have a lot of connections, like you're, you're imposing on the traveler's time. So you might have to sort of have a complex uh, way of uh, Right. Function. Right. So I'm hearing just from that, like three different possible cost functions we could use. And we could also, we could add them all together and weight them. So we want something, we, and even put price. Let's put price. What else? What? Fuel use. Yeah, your carbon footprint. You can buy carbon offsets now. So you can, you can sort of trade that one off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're frequent, I just figured out frequent flyer. <laughs> Like, it's actually really nice. They, like, upgrade me now when I fly. Like, I, I didn't even realize this was possible. I guess I kind of did. I just didn't, like, at the time of doing that, it was not worth the time of, I guess it is worth it. I just didn't realize it was worth it. Um, anyway, yes, frequent flyer. So, you, so if you fly a lot and on a particular airline, they'll bump you up. They'll give you better seats. They'll give you miles. You can get free flights. Um, and these are different for different people, and they're even different for the same person over time. So I used to not care about frequent flyer miles, and then, my husband started doing it, and I was like, wow, that's really nice. So then I started doing it. Um, and so then my own cost function changed over time. Um, and we'll see that the way that you formulate the problem, the decisions you make at this phase um, when you're approaching an AI problem can have a large effect on how things play out when you get down to nuts and bolts and trying to code it up. Um, so there's a lot of different trade-offs that you can make in this process. All right. So this is what I had in my slides. Mostly what we wrote down, goal test. And I left path cost blank because it's so, uh, so open-ended. All right, so here's another one. This is a puzzle. Um, it's like, a, let, me, let me move the, the screen down. And this is going to come up uh, in the next lecture, too, when we get to heuristic search. Um, so uh, this is like based on like a children's toy. What you can do, what you're trying to do, is put the blocks. They start out in random order, and you're trying to get them into numerical order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with an empty space in the lower right corner. And the moves that you can make are you can slide uh, a block into the empty space horizontally or vertically, not diagonally, just horizontally or vertically. So you can't take a block out of the square. You just have to slide it around. So, so this is a game that you, you can buy these as little toys. Um, so, so like two could move to the center, and then if it was down there, seven could move over, and you can kind of imagine that whole space. Okay, so why don't you guys take a few minutes and, and formalize a search problem.
Yep. Yeah. Are we going to say that like the transition model is the state between each individual? It's it's really a function. So it takes as input the state and the action and returns a new state. So like a, a state would be a tiling, a location for all eight tiles. But do we then just take that the result of the state function and pass it to a storage function, or do we run it multiple times? We'll we'll get to that. But but um. Yeah, we'll be running the transition function multiple times in our search. So, so the next thing we're going to do after we finish this exercise is start. To, we'll actually implement it, one of the, one of the algorithms in class. You'll see. You'll see what happens. All right, finish up, guys. All right, initial state. Start state. Yeah. So, how about you represent that? If you were going to write like a Python program for this or something. Yeah, like an array. What would be in the array? Yeah, maybe like a 2D array, like a little matrix. And what would the value of each matrix, each cell in the matrix be? One of the numbers are, are empty. Yeah. Is that the only way? Lots of different ways that you could do that. Um, so some representation. of the grid. All right, what are the actions? Say it again. Yep. So each item above, below, left, right. Slide, right? So I can slide any cell near that blank into the blank. So again, like if we imagine like this grid, so like I've got like a, an array, so it's like seven, two, four, and five. Let's say I use minus one for empty, six, and eight, three, one. So that's my state, okay? So, so my actions are for every cell to the left, to the right, up, or down, I can slide that cell into the blank. So that's just listing out the actions without saying where that takes me to a new state. So now tell me what the transition function is. I didn't plan out my board space. So this is saying a s prime, the new state, equals the result of being in state S and taking action A. So imagine I'm right, yeah, yeah? I, I'll say both. Um, so so uh, in, in discrete deterministic, it's a transition function, right? I'm going to take a state and an action, and I'm going to return a state. So it's a function. I can, and, I, and, and you'll see in, in, the, in, the, in the project how you, you'll actually write out these uh, transition functions. In non-deterministic domains, it would, it, uh, you more, you'd be more likely to say model, right? So this wouldn't return s. Um, it would be p of s prime given s and a, OK? A probability distribution over s prime. And so with this, instead of returning an actual state, this would be like a vector. Or, uh, you could imagine it if you could enumerate all the s primes. It would be like a, a, ma a mapping or something like s sub 1, 0 0.5, s sub 2, 0 0.1, s sub 3, dot, 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 such that it all sums to 1 and, and stuff. That's one way of representing this distribution. But we're not in that world, so don't worry too much about it yet. We're in function, function so we know for sure what state we're going to be in. So what does that look like? Yeah? We can just choose the action or whatever number that is and swap it with negative 1 in this case or blank space. Yeah, so, so, um, so, so some representation of the action that says which, maybe, so maybe the action would be like the index of the, the cell we're going to move. And then you could imagine constructing a new matrix, like copy this matrix, and then do some mat fiddly matrix things. To like make a new copy of the state with the with the empty cell somewhere else, the negative one up there and the, the cell down there. So 
So next time I'll plan out my board work better. But like it would go like some fiddly things. Let's say I'm going to move my one down here or my three up there. Then let's see, seven, two, four, five. So if I move my three up here, six, and then I got my eight minus one. Right? So that's, that's, that's one example of what this thing should do with this particular representation. And there's lots of ways you could do it. Like you, could, you could just sort of enumerate them all out, or you could try to write some, some code to, to do this with, uh, with fewer lines of code. It's actually kind of tricky. Um, so we'll, we'll actually go into an implementation of this later in the semester uh, during lecture and, and, and see how I did it. But like, it's kind of fiddly getting it, getting it right. Um, so even though it's easy to say in words, like the code behind this can be Non-trivial, which is why I think it's worth writing out and thinking of it in this way, because it, it kind of tells you the pieces of code you have to write. OK. Transition function. Um, all right, and the next is a goal test. Goal test. Does it equal the goal state? Does it equal the goal state? Yeah, so if I. Right, if, if I, at the beginning, I, I, I just tell it what the goal state is, and then I use equals equals to, to check. Is there something else I could do? That's a good way, but there, there's other ways. Let's say I wanted this to work for three by threes and four by fours. Yeah? Yeah, so I could write a test to check if they're, I, I just start enumerating through the rows and I check that they're in order. Um, so I could have a function. And which one you use, in this case, they're not that, like, um, if you're th in three by three land, they're not that different. And even in, in, in larger ones, you can imagine computationally constructing your state based on the size of the matrix and then using equality. You could also imagine having that function, that tester, like it's a very similar code, right, that, that constructs it versus tests it. Um, that, that gets run at every state to check if you're um, in, in, in that state. So, so why might you want to do one versus the other? Yep. What's that? Yeah, so depending on how your tests work, like how your quality test works, how fast it is, and how your, um, your, uh, your, your sort of algorithmic goal test works, there might be dramatic computational differences um, in how fast that, that runs. Um, in this version, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be all that different, but like in, in other problems, you'll, you'll, you'll see dramatic differences in, in, in what that looks like. Um, so, so you can play a lot of tricks in and what your goal test looks like. And also, if there's lots of goals, right? it might be that there, in this one, there's only one goal state with, with they're in order. But maybe um, we can construct it. We can say, well, it could be in forward order, or it could be in reverse order. And then I could pass two and check them both. Or I could have a test um, that checks them both. It, but it might be that there's infinitely many goal states. And then I could never enumerate them all. And I really need to have a function to, to check. Um, so again, it depends on the problem what that goal test is actually going to look like. All right. Path cost. Yeah, so every time I move, that's going to be a cost of one. Yeah. So this one is not too, 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 I don't know, complicated. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, so we're going to get there. But for, uh, and, and you don't have to. I mean, it, 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 uh, there's different algorithms that would test more or less frequently. But um, so, so the goal test is going to be on a, let me, is on a state. Let me, let me pull it up as a function. It takes as input the state and returns true or false. Am I at the goal or am I not at the goal? Not on an action. Um, we will talk about heuristics, which are functions of, of, of actions, and, and try to get it driving you to the goal faster. Um, and you could imagine if you had an expensive goal test, 
you might not want to run it in, at every time, and, 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 and so you might have heuristics about when you run it to, to try to save computation. We're not going to get into that, um, but certainly that, that's something that could happen. Um, or it might be that your goal test, as I think a lot about human-robot interaction, human-robot collaboration, my goal is to make the person happy. It's very hard to know <laughs> if your robot has made the person happy. Um, so you, don't, might, you, you might not be able to know if you've achieved your goal. I um, mean, you're looking for proxies. How can you estimate um, that? In our, but in our world for today, we're going to assume access to a fast goal test that tells us whether or not we've reached it. Yes? How do you keep the program from keep going like this in the um, we'll get, we're, we'll okay. get there um, in like five I'll minutes. I'll maybe, maybe I'll skip the, the last one. Um, this is another formulation of, of problems. The idea is you're my son, and you're trying to build towers of blocks. I'll, I'll put this down because we're going to use it soon. So like your initial state is where are all the blocks? And the set of actions is picking up, is maybe picking up a block and putting down a block. The transition model is the structure of the, of the world after you've, you've taken that action, picking something up. And now it's in your hand, putting something down. Now it's not. Your goal test is, well, maybe if you're my son, you like the blocks scatter all over the floor. Um, if you're me, you like a big tower, and then he like knocks it down, and so it's like this cycle. Um, you can imagine many different goal tests, um, and then uh, whatever it is. Um, the thing I wanted to make with this is like you could say pick up or put down. You could say move. Okay, so pick up could be one action. Now I'm holding the block. Put down could be another action. Now it's now it's putting down. I could also say my action is move. So that move would be like I pick it up, and I put it down. So in one step, I get to to a new state. Um, and this also applies to like the forklift world, where I could have picked many different discretizations of this continuous state space. I could pick different granularities for, for my action space. And those decisions will have a large effect on how fast this runs. OK, so we've talked a lot about problem formulation. I want you guys to take a minute and, and think about it in terms of this uh, phone problem. And then we're going to get to coding. So how would you formalize this problem? In my coded up solution, there was a state. And then what? Then list all the edges. From yeah, so a state is going to be like where you are in that graph. So like I've got a one digit number, and then I've got a two digit number, three digit number, four digit number. Right? So it's going to kind of all the way down to 10. So you can imagine this branching, branching, branching tree. The new, like, let's say the root is like zero digit numbers, and then there's 10 nodes falling out of that, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then after that, five would die because there's no connections. But then, but then one would give you all the connections from that and all the connections from that. Yeah. let's say we're starting from zero. Yeah. Is it all kinds of these numbers you can make from four and six? Or is it like zero to six, six to one, one to eight? So if I start from zero, yeah, zero to six, six to zero, zero to six, six to zero, to, zero to six, 
and then six to all of its yeah. Would a would a proper answer consist of like six, one, eight, three? Yep. Okay. Dot dot dot. So every time, every step is then a nice move away from that next. That's number. right. Yeah. Okay. So it's really just pure graph. Yeah. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to say like for each number, what number? Is, yeah. Uh, what numbers? Is Finish up, guys. Yeah. Would a sensible strategy be to start at one? Yep. Like, ask itself a question: Am I allowed to go? Yeah. No, can't go. So, so search. It can go in any of like in the ideal world. It yeah. can go in eight different directions. So try all, all, you know, whatever. And if it's allowable, store. That's one way to do if it. If not, it was me, I would. What I did when I coded it up is just write down the connections. Right? There's only ten. Oh, oh, you, you just, I just you wrote just a, did a I just, okay. just did a discrete like version. A so one goes, I just wrote down, one goes to six and eight. So you just enumerated That's what I did. So it doesn't scale well, but you get your answer quickly. Yeah. And then the to avoid the doing fiddly matrix and things. The but you're true. thinking about it in the right way. And then, if, and then the if one and six is true, then you have to count the reverse as six zero. Yeah, I just, I had them all. <laughs> <laughs> and then or I, wrote, I think I wrote them one way and then I had a thing is, to make them all. six legal? Or, or, you know, like, yeah. 60 is legal. But six, zero, zero, six, six, zero, six, zero, six, zero, six, zero. Yeah, I want all of them. Okay. All right, finish up, guys. Okay. So, initial state. What's that? Location of the, yeah, so let's say I'm going to start with like a, like I, I want a 10 digit phone numbers, right? So, so my second state is going to be like all the first digits I could have. What's my, my initial state, yeah? Oh, I was going to say the initial state would be all of the possible Yeah, that's fine with me. Right, so to make it a single state, let's say, so imagine like a search graph with, with like a zero digit and then coming off of that is all of your, Digits. One. Yeah. That's how I. Uh, so, what's your state going to look like in, in this model? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be an empty array. And then, as I take actions, what's going to happen? I'm going to add one number at a time. So, my initial state, at least the way I code it up, is going to be like an empty array. And then I'm going to kind of add stuff to it. So the state's going to be a list of numbers. And at the leaf, all the way at the bottom, it'll be 10 digits. But at first, it won't be. I'm going to build it up. All right, and what are my actions? What's that? Yeah, so actions. Right, so my first action might be just all the numbers. And then first, all numbers. And then the second is um, Knight's Move. Knight's Move. And, okay. How could I encode that? Yeah? You can use a graph where nodes are connected to nodes that are a Knight's Move. Away. Yeah, and when I coded it up, that's exactly what I did. So I just said, okay, I'm going to define my graph. One has edges between six and eight. Is that it? And two has edges between seven and nine. And I just wrote down all 10 of them. And five was empty, like you guys pointed out. Is that the only way to do it? No. How would you do it? How, how else could you do it? Yeah. Yeah. You can make some kind of, you know, over two and up one, up down, and, 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 and have some, something that blows up if it gets outside the phone, the, the telephone answering pad. Um, so that, you know, fiddly matrix arithmetic, but maybe more generalizable. And sometimes what you got to do. Yes. Are you, <laughs> you're making <laughs> All right. Transition model. What's going to happen if, if, if I make a jump? So I go from 1 to 6. What happens to my state? Yeah. 
Yeah, right. So I'm going to I'm going to do like an append. Append python. So if my s prime equals s plus I'll write 6 to make it very concrete. But it would be like the number that I'm that I'm jumping to. Okay? Um What's, what's the next one? Goal test. What's my goal test? Yeah. Do I have 10 digits? Yeah. Because I want them all. OK, good. And this it's kind of funny, right? Because it didn't seem like a search problem maybe at first. This is what I got stumped on it when I was on, during the interview. Um, it didn't seem like a search problem because there's, like there's not a goal. I want them all. But like, it turns out you can use the same approaches, just enumerate uh, all of them. And then my path cost. Yeah? How are we representing the tree as an array? How are we representing the tree as an array? So, so, so we'll get there um, soon, I hope. I, 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 uh, I didn't do this thing of coming back to the Knights Remove last class. It's, and I think it's working, but I'm not sure. I, but I didn't allocate the right amount of time, so I feel like I, we're, we we're going to get there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there'll be a search space of this of this graph. So each node in the space is going to be this um, this grid. Yeah. So it basically, it seems like with it, you're going to have a lot of duplication. Clearly, you're going to be first or something over and over again. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll get there. We're, we're, right. The person who said dynamic programming, um, we're gonna we're gonna as we go down, we're we're gonna right. basically well, enumerate every single we'll possible combination. Oh, like, which? I don't know what that is. I'm imagining like a hash or something. Here's like a tree structure instead of a, instead of a graph structure. We, we'll be building up a tree structure. Oh. Um, so conceptually, think of it as, for simplicity. Think of each state as having an array, and we're just going to duplicate it. To make it fast and to make it more memory efficient, we could do exactly what you're saying, okay. um, and not expand the whole thing out. But I think it's easier to code and, and think about if you do not do that. Okay. So. So yes, there's tricks. In all of these algorithms, there's lots of tricks you can play. OK, so I keep promising we're going to get to code. Um, so here is the sort of pseudocode of this. Um, so now, basically, the problem is we've got one of these problems. We've formulated it. We've defined our states. We've defined our actions. And now what we're going to do is search through that graph that we've defined, through that, through that node of, of, different search, of, of different things. Uh, and this is the pseudocode from the book. I don't like pseudocode that much. I don't know. Like it's hard to stare at that and, and take something out. So I'm putting it up so you know it's there, and that's what we're going to be following. But what I want to get to now is basically coding this up from, from in Python. So so that's what we're going to do next. Um, and we're going to code up a, an algorithm called breadth first search. So so basically, if you want to visualize one of these searching algorithms, what's happening is we're going to start at the root node. Let's say it's A. And we're going to start walking around in this graph, exploring these different nodes. OK, so each of these nodes in the graph is a state. Each of these edges is one of our transition functions. And our goal test is like, well, are we at the goal node? So like, is it the node that we're at, is it G? This is an abstraction of all of these problems we've been talking about. Um, we're going to talk about our searching algorithm in, in the context of, of this. So there's different orders that we could traverse uh, these nodes, OK? So, so one order is we could kind of do, we could kind of be broad, right? We could kind of expand everything down to depth one, and then expand everything down to depth two, and then depth three, sort of in this horizontal way. And that's called breadth first search, OK? So, so an example is we're going to start at A, then we're going to expand to A's children, B and C. And then we're going to expand B to its children. And then we can keep going down, but we're not. We're going to go over to C and do its children, and then sort of keep going from there, this very broad way. In contrast, and then do all these, the, the children. In, in contrast, we could do depth first search. So here's a deeper tree so you can kind of see it. Um, so in depth first search, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom before we come back up. All right? So all the way down. So, so we're going to expand B and C, and then we're going to expand B to D and E. And then we're not going to go back to F and G. We're going to go down again. We're going to expand D down to H and I, do these two. 
And by do, I mean check if the goal test has been met. And then go up to E, right, and, and go down to the, to the root node. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Um, all the way down before we come back up and, and do the children. You can kind of keep going through. So, so to see what this looks like in, in code, now we're going to do the long-awaited um, search. Let's see. I got to I'm just going to mirror my display so that I can see what you see. Let's see. I'm not letting that do it. <coughs> mirror displays. All right. Can you guys see that? Should we make it bigger? Yes, no? OK. People in the back? Yes? OK. All right, then I'll, I will not make it bigger. Here. All right, so here is my search graph. So, so actually, I'm going to pull in a more complicated one. I was going to construct it, but I, I want to get to the the meat. So we're just going to define a graph. And you can imagine this as your phone graph too, right? We could put we could have put those numbers in there. And I'm going to visualize it. So let's run it. Here it is, the picture of it. So A goes to B and E and D, C and F and G. And I'm going to define my search function. Okay? And I'm going to do let's say I'm going to do breadthford search through this graph. So what arguments should my function take to search through the graph? What's that? A root, yeah, some way to go through the graph, right? Like my initial state, like just like I, you know, I was talking about, and, and my transition model, and, and my action space. So I'm going to re represent this all uh, using like Python, uh, a Python map. But I'm just going to say it's going to take the graph. OK? And that's going to tell me all of the edges, all the transition model all, all encoded in it. What else? Yeah? The initial state. Right. Start. And what else? Somebody else? Yes. My goal. Yeah, my goal. So pass just says don't do anything in Python. Um, all right, so let's call it, and I'll pass my graph, and let's start at A, and let's go to G. So what's going to happen when I run this? Nothing. So why is something happening? Take out visualize. There we go. Nothing. Okay. So now what should I do? What's that? Yeah, I want some kind of data structure that's going to have this notion of like what nodes are open in, in my graph, right? So, so I'm going to call it active set. And, and what should be in it? Yeah, my start. Just start? OK, let's try that. And then I'm going to do some, like a while, a while loop, right? Let's say while true. Now what? What's that? Yeah, so to get my hands on start, though, I had to do something, right? I had to pull out something out of my active sets, right? So, so um, here, Ecter's active set dot pop zero. So this is Python speak for I'm going to take the zeroth element of my active set and, and put it in the here variable, and then I'm going to make active set be reduced by that, by that element. And then what I'm going to do is go print. Here. So what's this going to do when I run it? Crash. Why? 
Because my active send is empty. Yes, exactly. Um, so what should I do? I need to like put some more stuff into my, my active set. Um, so how, where can I get some new stuff from? From my graph, right. So I'm going to say children equals graph dot slash here. OK, and then let's print them out. What's this going to do? What's that? Say it, say it louder. I'm still going to get an error, but I'm going to print my children first. Okay, so I can see that, I, that I've got my children. I'm going to so what do I want to do to make this error go away? Yeah, that's, that's good. Yes. So when my active send is empty, I don't want to run anymore because otherwise it's going to crash. So in, there's, there are different ways to do this in Python. I'm going to say, well, length of the active set doesn't equal zero. All right. So I did one step in my search. That's good. I don't crash anymore. Um, is this what I want? So kind of conceptually, what do I want to do? I'm taking stuff out. What else do I need to do? Yeah? Yeah, I want to put stuff back in. I want to add my children to the active set. So for child in children, active set dot pen maybe? A pen what? Yeah? What's that? I have a yeah. Yes, very good. So, so the, by the way, I want to say the reason that I like to do this in kind of, maybe I'll take off the answer from below too, but um, I like to do this in live coding mode because you can kind of see how the program is constructed um, step by step. And you can see, like, like the way that I like to do this kind of thing is like you, you get something that works and then you test it and then you get something a little bit more complicated, a little bit more complicated. This is the way that you guys should be coding when you approach the, the projects. And there's different decisions you can make about the order that you can do things. So like when I coded it up, I didn't, I didn't put the goal test in until we had an infinite loop later on. Um, I just lived with the exception. But somebody pulled it, pulled, I forget who it was, said, let's get rid of that exception now. And we did, and that's, and that's fine. So, so what was your? Yeah, check for the goal state. So, so, um, so if here equals goal, return what? Return true. Okay, we can do that. And then I'm going to say result equals, and let's print result. Why is it yelling at me? 